Good morning, my special LHM tribe. Right, 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 right. We've been on this beautiful journey for a few months now, right? Since uh, December 2021. Thank you so much for... We are now like 154. <laughs> oh, God. You're so beautiful. It's even 154, 54. I don't know. Anyway, I just give God all the glory for the tribe. And um, yeah, this is Wednesday. It's always a wonderful morning for me because I do morning glory moments. I do my daily vlog. I'm still on my afternoon with commitment journey. So I have to do this daily vlog. And so I do my daily vlog. I do um, uh, morning glory moments. And then I am doing ministration. And I have to put a clip on TikTok as often as I can or daily or anything. That one, there's no prescription. I'm just free to do that. But I'm loving it, right? Um, doing this 15 minutes, 60 minutes, 3 minutes uh, stuff on TikTok. And so I thank God for that. And um, I'm excited to be starting um, with the Daniel series. I don't know for how long we are going to be on Daniel. But I just love learning from all of this stories in the Old Testament, although I would also want to go to the New Testament better. And there's so much to learn, so much inspiration, motivation, and encouragement. I wonder what I was. Oh my goodness. How could I have found this? Did I find it boring? No, I don't think so. But I think I just didn't even know so much. You know, when you don't know better, you don't do better. And uh, you cannot blame yourself and, and all of that. So, um, I just want to thank God. I want to thank God. I was thinking of a song. I cannot remember it. It was about Daniel in the lion's den. <laughs> but I think I'm just going to use this song and say, Daniel in the lion's den, in the lion's den, Daniel in the lion's den, in the lion's den, Daniel in the lion's den. Papa God, lock the mouths of the lions. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, spontaneous praise. And <laughs> the song is actually about Moses in the burning bush, but I, Daniel in the lion's den. Okay, wow. So this is the question. We are back to questions. You know, don't ask me, ask God. <laughs> are you a Daniel in a den? So are you a Daniel? In a den, so they can be Daniel, they can be Dan, they can be both. It's good to um, um, contemplate, to minister, to share the word and all of that. But I thank you so much, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sometimes I don't even know what to say, what to pray about. I just like, Father... Rabba, Rabba, Raka, do it, Papa, do it. Do it in our lives, Holy Spirit. La 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 Ah, Holy Spirit, yeah, well, sometimes when we don't even know what to say, we just start babbling and the Spirit takes it from there and the Spirit takes it straight to you. Say from your mouth to God's ears. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, well, so I love my Wednesday mornings. And uh, I just give God the glory for that. Are you a Daniel in a den? So we want to start by um, knowing who Daniel, uh, you know, reading from the very beginning, right? Daniel chapter 1. Verse 1 to 7. As I said, this is going to be a series. This is part 1. I don't know how many parts the series always have. You know, some are 3, some are 5. One has even been 7. It's all as the Spirit leads me. So, Daniel chapter 1. Daniel taken to Babylon. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim. 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 King of Judah. You know, after uh, 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 David, Solomon, and all of that, and the the the, the, the kingdom is the, the tribe is divided. The kingdom, and each tribe goes its own way. So now Judah was there on its own, and Joachim was the king. Uh, they were beaten or defeated. 
by the Babylonians, right? And Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And so he came to, he's the one who led that the besieged, came and conquered Jerusalem. And the Lord gave Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand. You see, this is it, though. Disobedience from the time of Joshua, Israelites, one Wahala to the other. So, Joachim has fallen. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he has come and destroyed the people. Sometimes when you have a problem with the man, you say, you son of Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> so anyway, um, with some of the vessels of the house of God, Nebuchadnezzar took all of that. And he brought them to the land of Shina, to the house of his God, Nebuchadnezzar's own God with a small G, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Aspenas, now we are talking about Nebuchadnezzar, right? His chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility. So you know that Nebuchadnezzar, you know that these people of Israel are special people, both of the royal family and of the nobility. Don't forget you are a royal priesthood because we are descendants, right? Okay. Youths without blemish of good appearance, uh -huh, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. So you know, you want youths without blemish. You want youths of good appearance. Fine, fine boys and fine girls like Mag, right? Put your name there. You are fine, fearfully and wonderfully made. Own it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Okay, so... He wants those kind of people, people who are skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace. Okay, oh. He wants them to come now, and he wants that they should be taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans. So this is how people are whitewashed. Black, uh, 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 people are... Yeah, people are brainwashed not whitewashed you're not a war people are brainwashed you know you take people like you know like when they took the slaves to america they started to change their names like this guy who was who uh, um, this film called um, roots it's about this guy who was taken from some country maybe niger wherever i don't know taken to america and he did not want to change his name but he was beaten so mercilessly in the end he had to accept that new name they gave him a name to be or something like that he's name of origin was Quinta Kunte. And they did that, and I think some of his generations were, I mean, they, they traced their roots to that and all of that. That was wonderful. So now the king wants these people, and he wants them to be brainwashed, taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans, because you know the Israelites, they have their own language, right? I think they, they was it Greek or something like that. Now they have to, and they had their own history. So that is what literature is, right? Do, uh, uh, what is written down in the form of of stories and all of those things so uh, uh, he wants them to learn his own that of his people he doesn't want them to stick to their own and soon he's going to want them of course to worship his own god or he himself something like that so the king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate so they even have to be fed his own food oh my goodness and of the wine that he drank, he wants them even to drink and get drunk or stuff like that. Just forget where you are coming from. Forget about your culture. Forget all of those things. Wow. Are you a Daniel? Are you in a den? Some captivity? I don't know which one. Ah, pray. -o. They were to be educated for three years. Oh, so this brainwashing had to go on for three years. And at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Okay, so... um. He said, it's just like Esther, right? They said, well, keep her in the haram or haram or wherever you keep those wives and everything for one year before the king will now choose which of you is good enough to be his queen. So these guys had to be like the light has gone, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, Papa, so this is what we have. So they had to be educated for three years. So because... Before coming to you, they were dull, right? 
Uh, is it not that very king who said that he wanted people who were skillful in all wisdom and down with knowledge, understanding, learning, and and understanding and learning? But now they have to be educated like that. Some dull people. You see how they took the slaves to America, like or, or, or when they brought religion to Africa, made like well, we did not know nothing. We did not even know God nothing. So we had to be all our they call it what they call those practices what um, whatever. Oh my goodness, how do they call them? They call them witchcraft, they call it all kinds of names, you know. But today, the same church is talking about enculturation. So our culture is even what it. Sometimes people just get pissed up at church and everything. They say, I don't want that. I think take that Jesus thing and go away. Because of the way it was brought and the way people were oppressed with it and all of that. So it's, it's, it's no longer about Jesus and the relationship you can have with him or you should have with him. It's about all of that embalming, you know, the dynamics and the gymnastics and, and, and all of that gimmicks of man, sadly. So he said they were to be educated for three years and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Hananiah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azaria of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Oh, so even Daniel's name was changed. Ha, oh, now wow. So Daniel he called Beth, Beth Shazar. Hananiah he called Shadrach. Mishaya he called Meshach. And Azariah he called Abednego. So they changed their names. So they want to change everything about you. You know, you get into a relationship and you start to wonder, am I, because that's the end for today, am I a ghost of myself? What's happening to me? This is not true. This, even your name is like, some women say, I don't want to change my name. Because when you get married, you have to take your husband's name. So you, you don't have a name now. It's his name. You are known by. And then what if something goes sour? You start struggling to change the name again. Like all of those things. You will change the food you eat. If you were not used to eating, like you, would, we are going to see how Daniel had to be like, I, I don't want me this food anymore. You know, what is in that food? What is in that wine? Why am I to study their literature and forget about my aunt for three years? It's like going through a university program altogether. Ah, uh, so who knows if you find yourself in that situation, right? Um, if you can relate so far, frankly speaking, what do we do? We pray. We pray to our God. We refuse to, to, to deny our roots and, and all of those things. You know, we, we cannot be forced anymore. Jesus came and died on the cross to set us free. And who the Son of God has set free is free indeed. So, no. Nope. If we are Daniel in a den, we see what God did when they locked Daniel in a real den. In the meantime, we continue to be steadfast in our walk with God, unwavering in our faith. We continue to come before His throne of grace because He assures and reassures us, I am with you. Be strong and courageous. Fear not. I know the plans I have for you. You are more than an overcomer. Oh, Father, thank you so much for your word this morning. Thank you for everything. Ah, yes, I go forward with that to court today, Father God, and I give it all up to you. Even the program in the afternoon, in short, this whole day, I commend it into your hands. Commend my kids into your hands, my family. I thank you so much for this strife, Father God. And I pray that anybody who identifies themselves or relates with being a Daniel and currently finds themselves in a den, whichever den, whatever that situation is, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, dispatch those angels, Father God. Holy Spirit, take control. Break that yoke. Break whatever it is bulging them right now. May they just come to you, Jesus, as you say in Matthew 11, verse 28, verse 230. You encourage us, come. Come to me, oh, you are weary and heavy laden. Just come, brethren, come. Come to Jesus. Bring it to him. Bring that situation to him. And let him take it and give you rest. Isn't that what we want? Oh, my goodness, Father, thank you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Oh, Papa. 
I never knew you would honor me this way. I never knew you would honor me this way. Oh, I never knew you would honor me this way. You would honor me this way. Blessed be your name. Okay, tribe. So, well, bear with my father. It's morning already. Next morning glory moment on Friday, 4 a.m. GMT. Next ministration on Sunday. In the meantime, you can watch all this powerful teaching by my bishop, Bishop Barry Lesseben Nalova. God bless you for this mama in my life. On her teaching on endurance, inspired by hope. Um, I put the link there. Oh my god, I have to put the YouTube link too there, right? Show some love. Go subscribe to her YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Tribe. Thank you, Father. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful Wednesday world.